Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have Christoffel here, and he is an amazing individual who has something very special to offer. He is going to talk about the head, the heart, and the gut, and how it's all intertwined and how it makes a difference if to use them properly in your lives. So, Christoffel, it's a pleasure to meet you. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do, because this is a very interesting topic to me. Stacey, thank you so much for it now hosting me on the show. I followed your show and said, oh, that's great to be on there. <laughs> Who am I? Uh, say, I'm an executive coach. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, psychotherapist, author, and a visiting professor at two MBAs. That sounds a lot. And if you just manage a little bit your time, it goes all perfect. Why mm -hmm. do we do all those stuff? Only for one reason, to make people actually happier, healthier, more successful. Like a lot of people like to do, of course, if you look in the coaching world and those kind of things. As you said, there's one big difference. And it is that I work with people with the head, heart, and gut. And then you think, well, how do you mean that? Now, science already proved 30 years ago that we have an actual brain in our heart. And it can memorize and can make decisions. Every person has a heart transplant can acknowledge that part because they have different kind of memories, different, different kind of decision making. Our gut, what is now so popular, is actually also a brain and actually is almost always in charge of us. And again, when I talk about the brain, I mean it is the same as we have in between our ears. It has neurons, so there's brain cells, white matter, gray matter, and all the in-between connections that would make it a brain. And it can memorize and can make decisions. Now, why is that so important? Because I think all your listeners and viewers once said to somebody, why don't you just follow your heart? Mm -hmm. Or why don't you just follow your gut feeling? And every time I hear this and I ask the person, what are the criteria to follow your heart? And how does your heart make a decision? Then we have this silence or uh, I don't know. The <laughs> same if I ask, okay, your gut feeling, what is, what is the criteria? How does it choose? And I don't know. What's now the beauty of it? They have really is proven different kind of strategies. To make it simple, your gut is a beautiful self-centered, ecocentric uh, survivor. It does an amazing job. Hence, we're all here. Your heart mm -hmm. is really what makes us humans in that part. It is the social... The so it is better than every social media uh, advertisement. It loves to connect. It loves to bond. And of course, your beautiful head loves to have a beautiful memory and likes to do what it can perfectly predict the future. So that means if you follow your head, you follow logic. If you follow your heart, you follow, you follow how can I please people and how can I connect? If you follow your gut, you think, what's good for me? And I don't care about anybody else. If one of those brains is dominant for a person, but we all have somewhere by nature, but much more by limiting beliefs, things that happens in our life, let's call it trauma, then they are so dominant that the other ones are not listened to anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you actually only live by your gut, your heart or your head, with all the consequences there. Now, I will not make it so extreme that everybody who has overweight has an issue, but your heart their heart or their gut is in charge. Mm -hmm. And if you think, how do I mean that? Now, you, you know those soap series, Stacey, where they get the advice when they have a broken heart or something else, they say, let's go on Chardonnay therapy or let's take an ice therapy. Mm -hmm. what, they, what they actually say, the heart is in pain and the gut says, I know a way to make you feel happy again. Let's take some yummy sugars and fatty foods. <laughs> Instead, that the heart says, okay, so I need maybe some time just to grieve. Maybe I should connect with some other people, sing it out, feel good again, and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. To make it simple. Now, that's what I'm doing in all those different kind of jobs to make it known. That's why I love to be on your show, because I know you have a beautiful audience who are open. On, hey, how can I make my life better? Or what do I need? What, what do I have to do to make my life better? Right. So, again, Happy to be with you. And I hope I did not make a too long story because I'm the founder of this. So my issue is always, I know too much. 
And I like to share because I get so enthusiastic about it when I work with people and they, and they get happy again. Last yeah. week, um, I'm doing this also in training coaches so they can help their clients to coach in it. I had some coaches there and I always do a demonstration and people come in with their real issue. So there are experienced executive coaches and 10, 20, 30 years experience. They come with the issue that they already are struggling with for five or 10 years. And then one session, they're sort of like, oh, wow, Chris, I really have the idea. It's gone. How did you do that? What happened? I like to learn this. Yeah. And it puzzles me every time that it really goes so good, but it is. <laughs> Logically, it makes totally sense when you look at it. But when you see it happening, it has like, oh, wow. Because then the next time I see him in the training, I have something like, how's it going with the topic you had once? And he said, Chris, it's crazy. Last week I came in a training and I had it. And now already one week, it doesn't bother me at all anymore. It is really off my plate. And that's why I love it. Because it's so freaking amazing, awesome. So the head, the heart, and the gut all play a different role, but they all have a brain. Now, yeah. how, you know, can you go more in depth about how what the, the brain does and what the heart does and then what the gut does so people understand the differences and, and why each one has its own job and how each one differentiates between each other. Love to do so. So let's do it the other way around to go from gut to head and let's okay. follow the evolution. So okay. 500 million years ago, when living organisms started to um, develop uh, in, this, in the oceans, Actually, when you look at them, they were only getting food in and getting waste material out. And if you look mm -hmm. at the most primitive creatures, actually were almost a digestive system. If you now look, say, as an example, at the sea cucumber, yeah, what mm -hmm. is also in the oceans, it looks like cucumber. They actually see a living creature that can walk around. It can spill poison so it can defend himself. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the organs, it is actually a living gut. It is without a heart. It is without a head. And it is extremely functional. It survives almost in every sea. And it is able to, now, to already live millions and millions of years on this earth. So that's where we all originate from. Mm -hmm. So that system is still alive in us from our tip of our tongue to now on the part that we wipe off on the toilet. Right. Yeah. And as we originated from there, you could imagine a sea cucumber and all those other living creatures have an intelligence. Of course, they know <laughs> what to eat, what not to eat, with whom to make love or to reproduce, actually, because love they don't understand. Right. Um, which, which, is an, which one is an enemy? Which one should they spill poison to? Or which one can they just outrun? So it has yeah. a primitive intelligence. Now, that intelligence is also in us. And if you think, if, if your listeners think, how do you mean your gut is so important? I would say, I think common knowledge now is where's our immune system located for 90%? Right. Mm -hmm. In your gut. Right. Why is that? Why is it there? Because once we were a sea cucumber, it needed to have everything to have, an autoimmune, to, to have an immune system. Hence, we still have it. Mm -hmm. And we share that with, with all the bacteria, but it's a different story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does it want to do? Actually the same as a sea cucumber. It wants to live, it wants to eat, it wants to reproduce, and it wants to stay alive. And that sits somewhere. Your gut has almost the same meaning. I like to stay alive. I like to eat. I like to drink. I like to reproduce. And the word I is always there. Living creatures that are gut brain dominated are not social creatures. A right. sea cucumber does not have any friends, is not on social media, and does not send any like to anybody else. Mm -hmm. now, that's the gut. The heart came in actually now much later in, in evolution, and especially in our mammals, it became more and more strong, although also birds have it in, in a special way. But the mammals warm-blooded animals even more because they started to live, say, in communities. 
And to live in community, you have to be social. It's not only me, 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 myself. Right. And what did evolution do and nature do? And as your belief, or what did God do? He did something amazing. He put a neurotransmitter in the heart, but is not available in the gut. And that is oxytocin. Right. And oxytocin is known for the cuddle hormone, the love hormone, the bonding hormone, and the heart can synthesize that. And where do we feel love, Stacy? Yeah. Where do we feel a broken heart in, a, in the heart? The heart yes. is all about connections. And the moment um, a mom gives birth to her child, there's an oxytocin boost, unbelievable, that even after 24 hours of labor, you still love your little one. <laughs> Dads have the same only in a limited amount. The moment, say, we connect with each other, a little bit in both of us of oxytocin is released. So we like each other, Stacy. Not so much that we fall in love, but just that we like each other and that we bond together. Right. If that liking each other, of course, then more oxytocin is released. That's the main function of the heart, bonding and connecting. Because why is that important in, in also in evolution? When we are born, how independent are we? Right. Yeah. And, and Shiraf, in 30 minutes, it can stand and it can walk. Mm -hmm. So it can also walk away or run away partly for, for its predators. Now, how much time do we take on average to, to even to be able to stand up? One year. And before we can even outrun somebody, it takes at least now 10 years. So yeah. we're totally dependent of our caregivers or our parents. Mm -hmm. now, to keep that bonding so extremely straight, there's the heart. From parents and from kids. Right. And to keep them there. Now, why do we have that beautiful thing in between our, in our ears? Yeah. Because when we became really smart, and there are different theories about it. Uh, one is about that we started to learn language. But secondly, just like almost uh, now also elephants have it, that we created a memory. Mm -hmm. Now, what is now the use of a memory? Now, why should we remember everything? There's only one reason for that, to predict the future better. Mm. If you know what you're, um, they say you fall in love with, with a beautiful person and you really, oh, you, you ain't going to cook for that person. And the, and, it, and the first time you cook for him, it, oh, or she said, I'm not really such, I'm not really in the pastas. The next time you cook for that person, what are you not going to make? Pastas. Mm -hmm. Because you have a memory. Right. Uh, that's why we have this beautiful thing. And in between our ears, that takes 20% of our energy consumption. Eh? So it's an extremely expensive hobby, that thing there. So the only reason that evolution let us have that is because they have a huge reason. And that's the, all those memories. And our, bu our beautiful head knows future and past. Right. And our heart and gut are, I would say, like the average animal that only knows today. It only knows actually now. So yeah. ask your average dog or cat, uh, uh, would you like to have something uh, in two hours? It doesn't know that. You could compare it to make it extremely rude. If you ask a three-year-old kid, um, uh, should we have an ice cream tomorrow? Mm -hmm. The little kid is totally confused because it does not know tomorrow. It likes to have it now. Mm -hmm. Because we learn time somewhere around year six, when we are six years old. Before six years old, we don't know time. Right. Yeah. But those are the three options, or the three reasons why we have them. And together, they make us amazing as we are. Yeah? We take care of ourselves. So that means we are number one in sports. We take a career. Uh, we do the things. We are on time uh, at our work. Yeah? Me, 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 me. We have mm -hmm. a heart, so we connect with our colleagues, with our partner, with our kids, with our families. So we're really part of a group. Yeah, we accept them. We're standing in 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 the in the subway that we have so many people around us. Yeah, we are screaming all together in one big stadium for our favorite sports team. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, as you as you told me, you're Greek. Yeah, we all dance together, the dance, and we throw the the, the plates on the floor, arm <laughs> in arm, and we have a big fun together. And that's your mm -hmm. heart. And your hand mm -hmm. just makes it logical. Is it wise to do it now? Is it wise to do it tomorrow? Should I say this or should I say that? It's a strategic mm -hmm. planner. So if you use all three of them, we are just 
amazing. If you use one of them, you fall off the bandwagon and probably you will get regret. What is regret? Regret is that you with the new information come aware, oh, I should have followed my gut. Oh, I should have listened to my heart. Oh, I should have thought a little bit longer about this. If yes. you have all three of them, regret is almost not there. It doesn't mean you're always happy with the outcome because we cannot predict always success. But you don't yeah. regret that you did not put all your best energy, effort, and knowledge in there. So if you don't like to have regret, use your three brains. Now, one thing I find is that I, I notice that a lot of people I speak to that I've known or do know now, sometimes they're one part is more dominant than the other. And sometimes I think that can get you into trouble too, because, you know, if, you know, that you have your type A, your type B, your type C, yeah. you know, and a lot of times people don't know how to balance all three, but when, you know, from your own experience, what do you see happen when, when people kind of focus on more than just the, either one more than the other, like your heart, your head, your gut? Beautiful question. Eh? Um, and I teach that in my training and I did just a little slide from how can you recognize somebody who lives by the head, the heart or the gut more dominant? And if people live by the head, it means that if you make it again, really you know, black and white and 50 shades of gray exist, eh? mm -hmm. people are dominated by the head are not spontaneous. They like to think it through. Um, they will never jump out of uh, creativity to do something crazy because it is not logical. Yeah. So there is no, they, they follow always a logical path. So they're not the risk takers. They, mm -hmm. they follow the A, B, C, D, E. If they have a story, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, and all the 26 letters a lot of times detailed because everything is important. Right. That is great, but it keeps them stuck in where they are most times. They don't see the big picture. So when they are in a relationship or in businesses, it's hard for them to really get in the top because for the top, you need a big picture. For a manager, you need sometimes a big picture. If you're too much head dominant, you like to be a micromanager. Mm -hmm. Because you like to see all the little things. In relationships, there is no real spark. Then you say, you know, we know each other one year. Let's just be Tony's. Let's go to a beautiful restaurant. And the head brain dominant person said, oh, yeah, but I was just busy with it. Let me think about this. And there goes the Roma. I won't say there goes the Romans, but the spontaneous is gone. Yeah. People who live dominant by the heart, they are the cuddly, and I would say they are the pleasers. In, uh, if you think about the sitcom Friends, they have that trait that Monica always has, Monica, Monica Geller, who likes to please, who likes yeah. to please everybody. Uh, besides that she's very neurotic, that's a lot of head brain sitting there because she's very detailed, like they have everything in the same place and everything should be clean, <laughs> a lot of head brain there. But she's really in heart brain in the pleasing side. Mm -hmm. Heart brains are pleasers. Those are the people who always will help you, but never say no. To those people are at the end of the day exhausted because they help you, Stacy. They help their partner. They help their kids. They help their neighbor. They help their work. They do an extra thing for their work. And at 12 o'clock in the evening, is they fall down on the couch and think, okay, I didn't have any time for myself. Mm -hmm. Those are also the people who are much more prone to burnout and actually also for issues, but now so beautiful in the health uh, uh, industries from uh, obesity um healthcare issues uh, the, their wellness the wellness part is down but for wellness you take care of yourself you have to say no to other people you have to say you know i take care of myself yeah. those are the people who in a group the group says let's take a, a, a drink mm -hmm. uh, oh i don't like it but i will say yes and do something what uh, what they actually don't like and eat too yeah. much drink too much just to please everybody else mm -hmm. That's the heart brain. The gut brain is amazing. It doesn't have those issues. It says, I don't like to have that drink. I would just take what I want. I don't care. If you don't mm -hmm. like me, I, I don't care. It's okay. And they're extremely good in that. You see them as really in, in top sport, in winners, everything where you need to achieve. And really, you have to put your, no, bite the bullet, they're there. Right. Pity is, they don't have real friends. Because everything is transactional. Can I use you or not? Okay, you're now useful for me, Stacey, so I like you. You WhatsApp me tomorrow. Can I help you? 
uh, there's no there's no benefit for me. No stage, I don't have time for you. And I just dropped you off the bandwagon. Mm. And so they, they have that part. Um, health wise, if they have say if they have a, they could get health issues because they're not smart enough or to take care so good of their body. If they're in one side of the gut brain, they like to look good. If they're in the other side of the gut brain, they think they can they can get away with it. Yeah. And they then just they, they are risk takers. So they say, oh, you know, I smoke, but everybody has to die. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I can jump out of this plane because although I never had, um, well, I have a parachute. But did you get an, 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 a course in it? No, no, no. But just pulling the course. I can, I can manage that. And they're really the risk takers. And they're the people who, who say, I, I will do bunker jumping. Mm -hmm. those kinds of things. It's great. The pitfall is they're isolated and they are not liked. So they don't get the help they need. So they can get career, but they somewhere use their employees like replaceables. Yeah. yeah it's, they always are for the short term. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's hard and gut brain don't think in long term. So those are really characteristics you can see in people. Right. They're really dominant. And they all have their different kind of trait of, say, health or happiness issues. Yeah. Now, what are some ways that if, to to balance all three? Because, you know, I, it, it's because uh, a lot of times you see that someone is more dominant in one area than the other. Um, but if you really want to use your your three areas where you could actually excel in life, which is your head, your heart, and your gut, how does someone learn how to balance all three to use it to their best potential so they can become the best version of themselves? I would say two things. I would stick up two fingers or four fingers, actually. Two, two. <laughs> One is really start connecting with it. That's how... Let us really start almost like, a, you could call it meditation or mindfulness, but it's much really coming aware, I have them, I'm going to listen to them. Uh, to make it, again, really binary, most women, based on their socialization, uh, most socialization of women is you have to please, you have to be sweet, you have to be nice, you have to look good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds horrible, but it really sometimes... So they're hard brain dominant. They never learned almost to listen to their gut, to their mm -hmm. own needs. So yes. for those, it's really to come over, hey, I have one. And this, that is almost really like putting your hands on it and start listening to it. And they always do to people a little exercise. And it is, they put, they put two fingers on their head and say, my name is. They do put fingers on their heart and they say, my name is. They put two fingers on their gut, my name is. In between, they always ask, how does your head respond? How does your heart respond? How does your gut respond? The same I do say with a nickname they had when they were young. That's more emotional charged. And they come mm -hmm. away right away. Oh, wow. Totally different responses. And then we start working on, say, different kind of topics they like to listen to. And then we come away and then we slowly start learning them to start listening or feeling the sensations of their body again. This mm -hmm. really starting feeling of sensations besides specific breathing techniques that helps you to start connecting with that part of your body. It's really a somatic retraining, start feeling them, start noticing them, start listening to them. That's one part. Mm -hmm. The second part is, say you have a really strong limiting belief. Eh? Girls should be good. Boys should be tough. Eh? So hence, we never listen to our heart. Why would you listen to your heart? If you have to be tough, eh? big boys don't cry. Then that is getting rid of that limiting belief. Eh? Mm -hmm. So the belief is not living your life in a course because it blocks to listen to another brain. Mm -hmm. And when, when you are learned that um, women are second tier and that you, you, you as a man have to be tough, then opening your heart or listening to your heart doesn't make sense. Right. Because then before you know, you would say, oh, wow, I'm like a woman, I'm soft. And by the way, big boys don't cry and all my mates, my mates will start laughing about me. So we have to get that limiting belief out of there so they can actually your body allows them to listen to it because if you have the belief your body almost shuts itself off not to listen mm -hmm. to it anymore the same is say with trauma highly impactful events if something something happened to you the heart or the gut but also the head can be turned off mm -hmm. for those specific things yeah. 
if it stays and it's really serious, we call it a PTSD. Yeah. Uh, also, those people cannot access other parts of the body anymore. Uh, and, and real PTSD knows he's not in Iraq anymore, or she knows he's not in Iraq anymore. But the body says, oh, yeah, I know, but I just hear the bang. So I still jump on the floor and look around if somebody's shooting at me. Mm -hmm. But then the heart and gut don't know it now. So we have to get those out of the system and they can then can start listening to it again. But for, say, most average people, this actually the first thing really starts reconnecting with this anymore. But we it again. Having said that, based on socialization, for most people it is getting a little bit flexibility in their belief systems. Mm -hmm. And it is allowed for a man to feel, hence his heart. It is allowed for a woman just to say, no, <laughs> do it by yourself. You know where the pants is, you know where the kitchen is, have fun there. <laughs> and I know this is really stereotyping, but that's where you see a lot of still things happening. Yeah. So I, I know I'm extremely stereotyping, but Go in, go around in the world, and you see there's still those stereotypes living so much. Especially doers all respect. There was 30 years ago a famous book: "Men are from Mars, uh, women are from Venus," or the other way around. And it actually yeah. made made the distinction: men are different than females. Mm -hmm. And most people know still the text of the cover. Yeah, I don't understand you, Stacey, because you're from Venus, I'm from Mars. And boom, there we are. What you actually say? Venus is heart brain, Mars is gut brain. Yes, mm -hmm. we are socialized like that. But it doesn't mean it is. So we have to, we have, to, really have to close that gender gap because you, Stacey, me, Christoffel, we have both have three brains, a head, a heart, and a gut. The yes. fact that we use a little bit more or less of one of them is partly our genes, but most of it is socialization. What did your parents say to you? What did your friends and girlfriends say to you? Yeah. So, but if we change that, it's totally not. And it doesn't mean we have to become fluid in all three of them. Mm -hmm. We can still be male, female, or LBTQ or RS2, whatever kind of number you like to have. Mm -hmm. But it is actually, I allow myself to listen to all three of them. And based on that, I make a decision. Right. Because just imagine that every politician would do that. Yes. And politicians would really listen to their heart. Because do us all respect, most politicians don't listen because they have to win. They have to get the audience there. And they would really listen to all three of them. How the world would change. Yeah. Because then, actually, they would not lie anymore. Because the heart brain doesn't like lying. Right. Because they have, of course, if you lie, you break the relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, and we know, I think, it doesn't matter where you live. All politicians have one thing extremely in common. It is a gut brain that tells all the stories just to win. Mm -hmm. Just imagine we could change that, how the world would look like. Or all those CEOs who say, no, no, um, my product is not polluted, is not polluting, although it does. And they would, they, they, and they could not lie anymore about what they sell. Wouldn't yeah. that be freaking amazing, awesome, that when you take a product in, in the shop, it would share honest information Right. Just imagine what to do with the world. Yeah, I know it sounds big, but for me, I love to dream big. Because mm -hmm. we are humans. We have all three of them. Yeah. Why don't we use all three of them? Exactly. Exactly. I feel too, like the the social barrier, how we grew up, always trying to, you know, that goes got kind of into the heart also. Um, but you know, the way we were, we, we were brought up, the values, you know, you have to go to church, you have to do this, you have to do that, you know, and that plays a role, I think, in a lot of people's lives. And even when their parents pass on, they're still trying to please their parents yeah. that are no longer here on earth because it's been embedded into their brain so far in and they've never taken the time to really consider what their heart and what their body really needs 
Instead, they were those people pleasers and just trying to gain approval of others. You know, how do we break those barriers, the barriers in each of those sections, you know, because there are so many people out there always trying to, you know, please, you know, the people from their past, you know, because of, like their parents are people of great influence and they feel that they're going to let them down, even though they're not doing what they really want to do deep down inside. Is that and actually that it's a beautiful example what you say yeah church parents and how we get educated the beauty of that is i would say it's again i would say it's easy you can almost solve it easy although it's not always easy yeah? but the, the theory is really easy it's a hard brain issue and all the values all the things we we learned to connect are in the heart so the heart mm -hmm. likes to be connected with the church hey okay so i do what the church says my heart likes to be connected to my parents makes sense Otherwise, it would not survive. So do what they say. But if we pass on in life 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, it doesn't make sense anymore to follow those rules. But the heart lives in the present, so it does not know, hey, those rule were, rules were really useful 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It still thinks it's now important. I did mm -hmm. not compartmentalize it. Logically, we know, I know I should choose for myself. I know I should do this. My parents are not there anymore. So... I can choose for myself. And the heart says, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that because I still live it now. Now, the moment, in my words, we educate the heart is not needed anymore. It was needed 20, 30 years ago, not now anymore. Now you can choose differently. Really, the heart drops it phew, right away because why should I use it anymore? Because it's in the past and it doesn't have a huge brain as in our head. Right. So it doesn't store only the things that are now important for the heart. So if it was important, if, so if it learns it's important for 20 years ago, it says right away, okay, we forget it. I don't care anymore. I have enough on my plate to do for now. Yeah. It allows on that moment also the gut to step in to say, hey, what do I want actually? Mm -hmm. Because I believe in the heart stops the gut from saying what I want or it says what I want, but the heart says, no, no, no. Because for us social animals, Social survival is sometimes more important than individual survival. Yes. And why is that? Because up to year, now say 10 years old, we are dependent of our caregivers, of our parents. So there's so strong bonded in us for those really strong connections for survival when we were young, the gut is not allowed to override it. Mm -hmm. Here we, are, we are all Leonardo DiCaprio's who let go of the little rescue thing and let Kate Winston survive in Titanic and the movie Titanic <laughs> it's still the same in that part yes and so but we can teach it and that is that's what I see so many times my training with people so I still have a beautiful picture in my in really in my first I had a beautiful guy in my training a coach 73 years old from the UK really having a beautiful English that you just get totally jealous of and in the sessions, he says, Chris, I have a topic. It, it is really strange because it doesn't make sense to me. I said, what is it? And, he's, and he shares actually one of those beliefs that he's still running already since he's five years old. He says, so that's wow. 68 years already in my life. I said, I know already for at least when I became 18, it's not, I should not do it anymore. He said, but I can't, Chris, I can't. Mm -hmm. So you say that you can stick that limiting belief. I will be volunteer. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, why did I say I like to have a demonstration now? <laughs> Anyhow, we work with him. The whole group is looking and is supporting and is beautiful. And the whole energy of that whole session now that really sparks through the head. And really at the end of the session, he says, Chris, because we ask him, how are you now? Is it? I said, Chris, I'm going to tell you something really strange. And everybody sounds like, ooh. And I think, mm -hmm. swallow. He says, <laughs> I said, I don't feel it anymore in my body. It feels empty there in my heart. Good empty, by the way. So it feels good empty. But if I think about it, that I sh should do it or not do it, there's no, I don't feel the need anymore. Well, up to one hour ago, I felt a need if I just thought about it. But now I don't feel, it doesn't feel the same anymore. Yeah. And why I remember it, because the beautiful guy was 73. It always somewhere pushed his life a little bit down. Mm-hmm. And he says, now, Chris, 
the next 20, 30 years I have to live, I think a beautiful optimist, chapter three, one, one and three, said, I can live without a little burden on my shoulders now. I'm so great. I, said, I signed up for this training really to learn how to coach in it, but this actually is, actually this session is worth all the money I paid. <clears throat> and it is so, so we can, we can, you, me, nobody has to live those beliefs anymore. So yes, we both can rescue the world, Stevie. Do you have uh, do you have some time? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope everybody's listening to you has something. Oh wow, we can. And as you said and you read that, I read the book, um, relationships with your brain is talking. It will not why they solve all your issues if you read it, but it gives you all the insight. Hey, where are you stuck? What can you do with it? And gives you some self help. Why I say my book. Of course, always say it's the cheapest solution. Yeah, 10 euros, go to Kindle, you have it. Yeah. Of course, you can follow training. It's much more investment to do so. And always say people, first, see what you can do for yourself before you right away run to a therapist to do so much stuff. Because we have all the resources inside us to heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. I never saw uh, uh, the average shark, crocodile, or elephant go to a therapist and say, by the way, I have an issue. Yeah. Or go to whatever kind of pharmaceutical. Can you give me some medication, by the way? Because I feel depressed, anxious. I have obesitas. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. Right. And we are still the same, only, quote, quote, smarter. Let's say we are smarter. <laughs> so we have all those resources also inside to do so. Of course, if you like to know more, you can always connect with me. And if you like to know which brain is the most dominant, that's really fun. And it really is fun. You go to my website, threebrainsintelligence.com. There you find a free test to come aware which brain of you is most dominant in your life. You get a little of, little bit of an answer of there. You, you get a score. You get an answer what your three brains do, etc. And it gives you a beautiful insight. Okay, so I live more decision-wise by my head, heart, or gut. And it gives you that insight at least to come aware this is how I make my choices when I don't think about it. For most people, it's not a surprise. But put you really that awareness in front of your face, you cannot deny it anymore. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to change it, but you cannot say, oh, because you know now. Yes. And the first step of changing is getting, awa getting awareness. Oh, what's happening with me? Right. So thank you for letting me share that. But I, really, I love that. All the people who listened and watched your show at least make one step to make their own life better. Yes. And if step two, life around them better. Now, what is the name again? Can you tell everybody so they don't forget the title of uh, your book? It, I would say it's extremely in, uh, simple. It's Three Brains, have hard got Three Brains Intelligence. Okay. Because actually, we have a Three Brains Intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. And so in the old days, you have an uh, in, intelligence co quotient. Yeah? So this actually, no, how, how good your head could do the math and words. Then we came emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And actually, we have a three brains intelligence. Hence also the name. Because I really like to be become aware, you're not only emotionally intelligent, you're the smartest IQ intelligence, but you're also three brains intelligence that covers all of them. Right. I love it. Now, tell everybody some of the services that you provide, because you provide some great services and you have some great programs, too, that you offer. So what do I do now? As, as I said, I'm a coach and therapist, so I still work with people one to one. Because why do I do that? One, because well, I just see people smile when they walk away. Secondly, it helps me to really stay really on the topic, because every time I work with a client, I almost say I learn something new. I learn their, I come aware of what they have and don't have. And all that, what they share to me gives me this, oh, I should maybe tune a little bit more left, more right. So it's almost my research and development. Mm -hmm. And they walk out smiling and happy again. So both benefit. Secondly, I deliver a three brain coach certification training. Most of the people who join our of course are people who do something with coaching or do with leadership management who also dear to coach. And people are just interested in, hey, how can I use my three brains intelligence to help myself or other people? 
mm-hmm. it's not a therapy training. Please don't come there if you think I need therapy. But if you mm-hmm. like to help people, go there. Because it just helps you and gives you amazing insight in yourself. But also gives you amazing insight to read other people. Because what is the beauty? Your three brains, we can actually come aware which brain is talking based on the language we use and how we do non-verbal communication and other kinds of things. But our language shares it already. Because if I say, this is a no-brainer, <laughs> I think everybody knows, oh yeah, that's probably your head is talking. But if you say, you know, uh, I, I, I cannot do that to her. She's a sweetie. Mm-hmm. My brain is talking. And if you say, yes, you know, I'm going to eat whatever I like because I just like it. God brain is talking. Or I just do what's good for me. Come on, me first. God brain is talking. So we can come aware which language people use, which brain is talking. Now, in every relationship, in every day of life, that's a benefit. Yes. Because if you talk to your now friends in the bar, and they say, hey, Stacy, what do you think of this? Then you know, what do you think of this? They like to have a logical answer. Mm-hmm. If you say, and if they say, Stacy, I really... Uh, what should I do? Should I follow my heart in this question? Then you know, oh, okay, they're following their heart. Maybe I should bring in some head and some heart and some gut in there. So even in normal conversations, it will help you amazingly. Now, the last thing I do is a, a master training in that. That's for people who just like to really, now I'm going to say, live it. Yeah. Next year also will be an online training will be there. And now you cannot have not online trainings. I'm busy with that, but my own perfectionism is a little bit stopping me in that part. <laughs> but I like to make it freaking amazing. And as I said, I'm the founder of this, so I have to squeeze what's in there. Mm-hmm. And I really love if people go in there, they come aware about the language, how can I help myself, uh, what can I do? So, but that's really scheduled for next year. Somewhere, you need time to create it all. So those are the things I do. And besides, as I spoke about my book, a new book is also coming also next year. Oh, excellent. Uh, okay. And what really uh-huh. goes in, yeah, but, uh, the, the title we are still discussing with this, but it's something mm-hmm. like leading, uh, leading with heart and grit. And I saw all three of them. It's really about, that's really about self-development. Huh? What can we do to become more healthy, happy, successful in life? Huh? How can you right. actually use your three brains to do so? So it is almost, you can also say it's a self-help, self-therapy, self-insight book. So there are, mm-hmm questions in there to come over hey which which of your brains are talking in different kind of situations or all kind of little tests and also later on uh, ad- simple advices tools how to do it and not what to do because i really get so annoyed by most gurus who tell you what to do you should eat less that's a what uh, you should care more about this they're all what's <laughs> and what annoys me that it never says the how Okay, I know that. How do I do that? So what yeah. is struggling me the same as the online training? The how. How can I make the how uh, easy to do in a way when I'm not there? Because if you read it, implementing a how is different than if somebody is helping you, coaching you, there with you. The same yeah. as online training. Now, I know the house I, and I don't know how actually really to make <laughs> it in such a way that's really transferable and actually it makes sense to people. Because I came yeah. aware of my book, I have to test about my name is, my name is, my name is, put fingers, put your fingers there. Mm-hmm. Everybody in my training says, I read the book, Chris. I saw it. I thought, that's rather simple. Maybe I did it, but it didn't have any impact. They do to the training and really, it, they're blown away. Really, they're blown away. People start crying when they do the exercise, have insights, have says, this, this is already so amazing. Chris, for me, the training can stop now. Of course, we don't stop them when you do it. So seeing the difference in the response when you read the book and when I see them live. Yes. Uh, ambition is how can I transfer it in an online training or in my book so that it has this, now, not the same impact, but actually it really has that impact. Now, that stops yeah. me a little bit. Oh, it, so and it, one it, of your listeners says, I listen to Chris and actually my expertise is to help him with that. Please feel free to connect with me. Because I really yeah. like to make things amazing and I know and we all have limited knowledge and somewhere there I hit maybe one of my walls on this moment. 
And it seems once we're quite aware of all three and how it works, and and we could also stop ourselves when we see one turn more dominant than the other. And in that respect, we could actually help ourselves excel because we can actually reprogram ourselves very quickly when we see ourselves becoming more dominant in one area when we should probably be equal or maybe focusing on a different area of the brain. Absolutely. You say it beautifully uh, and it's so true. Eh? In my own life, I see it a lot of times eh, when I do shopping and say, well, you, you know the difference when you are hungry and go shopping and when you're not hungry and go shopping, you say for food. When you're hungry, yeah. you really come home with stuff you don't like to have. When you're not hungry, <laughs> like, you follow your shopping list, at least <laughs> about myself. Up to, up to when I really start to know how my three brains work. So I know... And I know if I go shopping, and it, it is too easy to be true, I always take care. I'm not hungry when I go to the super to, to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. It's a simple strategy, but it makes so much sense. Most people forget it. Yeah. Um, and the same if you talk to somebody, and even you're in a hurry or not a hurry, I always think, okay, I really one spark goes up. Okay, this person, how can I stay connected with my heart brain? Instead mm -hmm. of thinking, oh shit, I'm now in a hurry, and I just said. <laughs> Yeah. Back tomorrow, unless of course it's really urgent. Because if you have an appointment, it is so easy to say, Okay, I'm busy, stay bye. But most of our appointments are not so urgent that a writer have to say bye, that one or two or three minutes doesn't care. But it makes for the right. other person a massive difference. So I know when it sparks up a fish, but you have an appointment, why don't you? And then a writer will know, Oh, three minutes doesn't make so much sense. I can give right. five minutes extra and make for the other person a massive change. And those five minutes doesn't really make my life workable. I'm not underneath the, underneath water with my head underneath the water, unable to breathe. Yeah. So those little moments of spark, those insights, listening to your frame, it makes a massive difference. And it sounds so easy, and it is so hard. In my book, I have an example, last thing about say people who learn to become say a priest, and mm -hmm. I love the example because there are two groups, and both are told that they have to go and they have, say, a presentation to do. Mm -hmm. and on the way to the presentation to the other building, there's a person lying on the floor, on the path, needing in help. Priest, a priest in... So, so you know, there are the people who help people. Anyhow, to one group to say, uh, you have the presentation and uh, all good, just go. And the other group to say, uh, you have to do the presentation, but oh, shit. You're late. Run. Mm -hmm. What happens to all those priests? The people who say you have all the time, help the people, most of them. The people the, to the priest they say, run, you're late. They just jump over that person who's lying on the floor and in yeah. need of help. And yeah. not because those priests are not good people, because what they did, they activated their gut brain by being late. Yes. And on that moment, their gut brain said, okay, Forget that person on the floor. You have to get there because you have a task to do. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful example of how most of us are. We're not aware of it. Yeah. But later on, they say that to this, those priests. Of course, the priest who just jumped over that person all feel bad and right away run to do confession and start praying even more from how can we be so bad? Mm -hmm. Until they are saying you're not bad, but this is the challenges we face in life. And they don't talk about three brains. The challenge we face in life as a priest and to be yeah. aware of all of it. Mm -hmm. and this, is, this is also a beautiful example eh, to, to train priests in that part, eh, the, the compassionate part. Now, having said that, why this example? We all have it. Eh? And I'm always the first one to raise his hand because we still have three brains. We all mm -hmm. form sometimes from a pitfall. Until we know what's your brain dom dominance, hence do the test. And secondly, you really start being aware, okay, if this one is dominant, I should be aware that the other ones are less dominant when something happens. So I really should start listening to them more. Right. And then life it's... is almost, almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> now, where can people find you on the website? As I said, Three Brains Intelligence, you find me. I have also a personal website, christoffelsnijders.com. That is harder because my name is really Dutch, so that's really a horrible thing to spell. But I will say go to Three Brains Intelligence. 
or type in relationships, Rich Brain is talking. You find my book and you find me. I'm extremely feasible to find. <laughs> this has been amazing, Christoffel. I I so glad you came on the show. This has been a very knowledgeable, very entertaining um, time. You have really shed light, you know, and made people. I think you know when they hear this um, presentation, they're going to understand that it's not just our brain and our head that's talking. There's a lot more going on, and to be able to utilize each section the proper way and to be able to keep them all aligned is is very valuable in every person's um life so i'm so glad you came on the show thank you so much for taking the time to share all your knowledge and if there's anything anything you'd like to say before we end are there any anything you'd like to emphasize before we go no uh, my heart brain would talk now and say stacy i'm so happy i was on your show and that we had such a beautiful conversation and I really wish you all the best with your show. And secondly, to all the listeners, watchers, really, one, listen to Stacy, And secondly, just make yourself much more happy and your family. Do the free test. No, no strings attached. And start making life better. Or read my book. Because we all have it in you. Eh? We don't have to have a horrible life. Of course, if, you, if you're in a war zone, yes, your life is not the most happiest. But... As once Viktor Frankl said, yeah. who wrote the book and psychology about, say, the Second World War and that he survived Auschwitz, people even in Auschwitz had two choices, to become a horrible person and to become a beautiful person in those horrible circumstances. We all have those qualities inside to become a beautiful person, healthy, happy, enjoying life. Please do so. Yeah. And thank you so much again, Stacey, for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.